Hi, my name is Ed Melton and I'm here to introduce you to ERM Performance Tuning and a very unique and exciting way to train and to learn HP Tuner software as well as learning how to tune with HP Tuner but more importantly learning how to use the software up front to make your tuning process much more accurate and much more enjoyable. Um, so we're going to go through a real quick little presentation on what it is we're offering and uh, try to get through it very quickly. So what our purpose is, is to bring familiarity to uh, HP Tuner software, to, uh, to the people that buy it, uh, to the people that use it already. Um, you'll notice that it only comes with a cable and really a uh, disc and there's no owner's manual, there's no user's manual, there's really no way of providing sufficient information to the user as to how it works other than they just go about reading forums and all kinds of different Google uh, searches and things of that nature and over a period of time you become familiar with it. Well, one of the things we want to do is to do away with that learning curve to make it easier now for uh, starters and, and maybe people that have been doing it and just don't have the, the full knowledge of how the scanner and the VCM editor operate and to make again their their work more efficient and, and get more out of it. So we provide what we call a one-on-one -on -one classroom and that provides real-time audio and visual feedback. We're right there next to you. Uh, it's kind of a unique process. It's not online where you take the studies and learn what you think you can and then maybe email or call somebody that gets back to you within uh, maybe five hours or ten hours or three days or three days. And your whole um, continuity for learning really gets disrupted. We're basically there in real time right next to you through uh, the wonders of technology and um, any questions that you might have, we can answer at that point in time. Anything you want to discuss, we can discuss. And the depth of discussion, again, is brought forward by what your intentions are and what your needs are at that point in time. So our goal, as it says, is to reduce frustration and preclude uh, foreign posts. I mean, we've seen a lot of posts where people go out and buy the, buy the tuning software. They have a huge twin turbo setup, seven, eight, nine hundred horsepower. And the question is not, you know, how do I do this? It's well, where do I start? And that's that's just a recipe for disaster. So we're here to uh, to preclude any of that from happening. So we have a course offering that provides for a a pretty strong uh, software setup and training. Um, it also provides for the uh, definitions of a lot of the sensors on board that a lot of people may not be familiar with. Uh, what it is they do, what the tuning process does to them, and why they're important to your tunes. Uh, we go through um, the tuning software download, how to install the folders, and things of that nature. Just how to set it up in the beginning so that, again, it provides you with uh, a, a broader and better um, base for you to move forward. And, and you're not fumbling for data and you're not looking for information. Basically, your logs are in line with your tunes and everything makes sense. Um, we will go through tuning parameters also, specific, PCM specifics. Um, every engine has a different setup and a need, and we're here to help you with that, to understand. You know, if you have a cam, if you have intake, if you have cold air, whatever you've got, we can come up with a tuning strategy that will uh, provide you with the best tune for your particular setup. And we'll also teach you how to pick those uh, strategies based on specific setups if you intend on moving forward and maybe making this hobby a career much like I did. Um, we have a strong background um, in that as we said you need a really strong background for that to be successful in the tuning process that occurs afterwards and what we're trying to do is to minimize the unknown so you can spend a lot more time in tuning and not trying to figure out how to use the software. We, uh, we work together. So how does this work? So we have a kind of a new approach. It's not, it's not like we've recreated um, any kind of uh, molecular <laughs> uh, science. It's not, it's not anything like that. But what we've taken is some standard 
uh, capabilities that everyone has access to and we put it together into what we believe to be um, the state-of-the-art type process for uh, learning and that is is that we and our customer one-on-one -on -one are together within their computer. I know it sounds a little like uh, Tron but that's about what it's like. We see and we hear and we feel and we and we can physically touch the work that's going on in the tuning software or the scanner or the data that's coming out of the scanner relative to um, logging and we have full access in real time to that and we can see it together we can talk about it together we can discuss it and it basically does away with a lot of the uh, uh, waiting for thread responses or what I call forum lag. I mean, we've all gone through it, right? I did 10 years of this, of asking questions on the forum and waiting for an answer. And sometimes it's a day, sometimes it's two days, sometimes it's 10 days, sometimes it's never. And a lot of other times that the information you're getting isn't correct. And some of that is because you haven't asked the right question because you're really not familiar with what it is you're trying to ask. And that's nothing wrong. It's just that it's, it's something that you have to learn through the scanner, the ability to be able to retrieve as much information as possible to provide to the people that you want to help you um, and give them the best shot at giving you the right answer up front. So, so we have a, an enrollment procedure for it um, in all of this. And we have basically two, kind of two setups for this. We have a training only um, curriculum, which basically we'll go through in a, in a, in a little while. But we kind of charge by the hour for that. And then right now, the going rate is $45 an hour. Um, we are also um, going to become uh, HP Tuner resellers. And we'll sell be providing the product to a lot of our customers. And what we'll be doing is we'll be providing a complimentary half hour or one hour uh, session, which will allow you to open the box and have us there to help set it up, get it out of the box, get it hooked up to the computer, again, get the file structure set up and to just to get familiar with the software enough to where you can actually start to, to mess around with it. And then obviously you're more than welcome to um, to buy into more training if you, if you need be and we'll, we can certainly set up any curriculum for anybody that uh, that needs that so we can do that. You dictate the topics and the depth of discussions in a lot of the cases, right? We'll, we'll only get interested into what you're asking for, and that's because it's one-on-one, -on -one, and that's one of the uniquenesses of what we have. Um, we also can provide turnkey PCM and transmission tunes. We basically start those at about 200. It's hard to say because they're all kind of based on the complexity of the setup and, and things of that nature, but... Um, you know, we can talk about those uh, as we get into it. So when we talked about the initial training course, it's all about the, the software and the hardware setup. Uh, we recommend that you buy the pro support, uh, the pro um, unit, because it allows you to interface up to four external uh, analog I.O. interfaces. Um, those would include sensors like wide bands or fuel pressure gauges or things of that nature and those can can integrate directly into your logging software through that means if you go for the standard unit which doesn't give you that support then there still is a means of being able to get your wide band into into a computer uh, it's just a little bit more difficult and you have to go through an EGR port or an AC uh, pressure port through the PCM and we we'll, we can guide you through that too we can we can we can do that, but if you have if you have you know if you're thinking about it, we would highly recommend that you buy the Pro. It's, it's like $149 more, but it's of course you $289 later if you decide you want to upgrade. So it's not, you know you can pay pay them now or you can pay us later. So whatever that is, we'll go through the software download, how to get it installed on your computer. We'll go and help you develop and implement a fire folder structure that we found works over the years. Uh, allows us to keep our logs and tunes and charts and all those things in a nice chronological order so we know what one of the keys is knowing if you if you did a log what tune created that data uh, a lot of times you come up with these big naming things and it's just it's just way too complicated so we, we simply just let Microsoft do that for us and just by by time and date be able to mix both the tunes and the logs into the same folder and then you basically they just line up chronologically for you. 
we'll develop uh, scanning PIDs, which are the different parameters that the logger looks at. Uh, we'll teach you how to uh, generate histograms, which is a means of being able to collect that data in various formats that, of what you need based on RPM or, or pressure maps or things of that nature. As I said earlier, we'll go through the wideband external I.O. setup. We'll show you how to set the hardware up. We'll show you how to set the software up. And basically just be there for any other issues or questions you have as, as you take the product out of the box. The next session would be um, basically the hardware and sensor reviews of the car. And that's kind of key because these are all the things that really drive into the big equation that says whether the car is going to run or not. Uh, we'll go through the varying different discussions on narrow bands and wide band with two sensors and one. The one is good and why the other one is mandatory for wide open throttle. We'll go through what the MAF sensor is, what it does for you, what the MAP sensor does as far as the pressures and boost and being able to do all those things. The cam and crank sensors, which are key because that's the only way that the PCM can keep in time with the engine because remember you have an electronic controller for a mechanical um, uh, mechanism so there are sensors that are key to that and a lot of that will have influences on whether the car will start whether it cranks forever or whether uh, you're getting misfires and things of that nature so we'll go through that uh, there's various different engines and intake sensors that we'll talk about uh, the throttle and pedal sensors believe it or not there are several different types and they kind of work concurrently so we'll go through that for you we'll talk about knock sensors and um, and how to desense those and to, and to really know whether the knock you're getting is, is real or is it just as a result of increased engine noise because of adding headers and things of that nature. Uh, the next subject is the one nearest and dearest to my heart because to me all tunes start with injectors. And is the, is the injector a, an injector that has valid data that you can use and it's accurate and it, it begins, it's the base for all of your tunes. If that's wrong, then everything gets wrong after that. And you're just chasing your tail. But we'll go through which ones we recommend, um, which ones the data is accurate for, and it's available, and things of that nature. I will talk uh, about the two different uh, idle controls, right? So there's an IAC, which is an idle air control uh, thing, which sits on a lot of the, what they call drive-by cable cars. And then there's the engine throttle control, the ETC, which are on all the drive-by wires. And obviously, drive-by cable is pretty self-explanatory. There's a cable connected to the pedal. You push the pedal. The cable pulls open the throttle, and it goes. Drive-by wire is a little bit different where the pedal is actually integrated into the PCM. And then from that, it develops how much to open up the throttle. And the throttle is then open through a stepper motor control. So there's... Uh, various different uh, differences to that, and we'll go through all of that as well. Then we have what we what I kind of call all the tuning strategies and the mis miscellaneous topic reviews that that kind of make up how you go about tuning and what type of tune you use and for what setup. There's different operating systems out there. There's so many different operating systems. Each of them has in their case their own limitations, whether it be injection flow rates or uh, mass air limits and things of that nature and how those PCM variants are different. You know, E67s are good for uh, supercharged cars and E38s are, are not. So you would want to go with an E67 if you were doing a swap and you were doing a supercharged. And we'll go through a lot of that detail. The differences between open and closed loop. Um, obviously open loop, it kind of runs based on what you tell it to do and on closed loop. The narrowband um, sensors will basically tell the PCM how close or far away it is from the commanded AFR, and then there's a whole loop system, a closed loop system into that that, that takes care of that, and we'll go through that with you. And we'll tell you why why some cars are tuned in open loop and why others aren't. There's fuel trims, again, which the uh, PCM uses to determine how close or far away it is from the, uh, the commanded uh, areas and fuel trim cells which help divide up this huge VE matrix into smaller groups so that the long terms actually cover a kind of a smaller area. There's 16 of them total and we'll go through that with you as well. Um, airflow and airflow, um, there's a whole bunch of different uh, formats and uses for that. We'll, we'll go through that with you. 
uh, air fuel ratio. Uh, <laughs> my big thing is, uh, you know, there's three ways of defining uh, how uh, air and fuel are mixed. One is air fuel ratio, which is kind of a straight end thing. It's, you know, basically if it's 14.6, it says it's 14.6 parts of air to one part of fuel. Uh, lambda is a different uh, means for measuring, and in lambda, basically 1.0 is what they call their storage, and um, from that it either goes lower to point, let's say 0.8, which is richer, to 1.1, which would be uh, leaner. And then there's EQ ratio, which is the complement of lambda, which basically says that if it's 1.0, it's, it's storage, and if it's 1.1, it's actually richer, and if it's 0.9, it's actually leaner. So we'll go through that, and we'll also tell you why lambda is the way to go to with today's alcohol-based fuels. We'll go through minimum idle air. Um, it's got so many titles and so many uses over the years. It's it's hard to to keep them straight, but you got to keep them straight if you're doing an LS1 versus an LS2 versus you know an LS3 type setup or an E38, E40. Um, 0411 type uh, PCM. They're all different, so you, you have to need to understand all that. But we'll go through the two different tuning styles of speed density versus math. Uh, speed density obviously being from the VE table only, math being from the math sensor, um, when to use them and why. And there's also a mode where they use both, and we'll go through that blended operation as well. We'll, we'll touch on naturally aspirated and forced injection and just kind of talk. Uh, at the top level basically what the differences are between the two and then there's the tune scaling which is needed uh, each of those limit in, in a lot of cases of limitations we talked about earlier um, relative to the PCMs the injection uh, injector flow rates and things of like that but if you if you exceed those values there are ways of being able to fool the computer into operating with larger injectors and we'll go through all of that process and how that works and then finally for the HP tuners, uh, Blue Cat is the only means currently for virtual VE, but even as this video is being made, um, the, uh, the folks at uh, HP tuners have uh, released their 2.25 beta, and in there it now is a self-contained uh, coefficient calculator, which uh, we've all been waiting for for a long time, so we're really, really happy with that's coming along. But we'll go through the Blue Cat software real quick, just... Uh, to fill in until it's, the beta is actually uh, released. We'll go through the different engine and tuning phases. Um, and what this basically does is takes every aspect of your vehicle from start to, to wide open throttle and talks about what's important in each one of those, what they can do for you, and how you best tune for them. Um, each one of them has to basically be, be right so it feeds into the next. And so you can see it's just a long continuous chain of good data gets you up and running and gets you to the wide open throttle areas which as it says here is that's why we all do this we all love to uh, sit in the dyno and just uh, stab that pedal and watch the, the rpms and the power just go sky high i'll talk about different tuning procedures um, there are several we talked about a little bit earlier math and ve and spark tuning how that works open versus closed loop naturally aspirated versus uh, forced induction and, and wide, wide band is an absolute must for any tuning. So if you're going to get into this tuning, you've got to get a wide band. Um, BE really needs attention in all cases, whether you're uh, tuning your, your daily driver or whether you're tuning a race car. And we'll go a little bit into that as to how much effort needs to get put into that in the various different phases. Speed density, why you use it, why you don't, um, we'll, we'll get into that. And then there's a thing, you know, dyno versus street tune. You know, we all kind of street tune in our day. Dyno is certainly safe. A load-bearing dyno is the best way to uh, to tune your car. Um, but some of us just don't have the opportunity to get there, so we have to do it in the street. And we'll, we'll kind of go through the safety of that and how to do that and how to get the best bang for that. Um, and as I said before, the scaling procedure we'll talk about also. Start up and idle. Uh, there's a lot of different strategies out there for start up and idle. We, we talked about the IAC, the ETCs, the LS1 versus the E40s and all that different thing. And we'll, we'll, we'll go through all that for you and get you comfortable with that. Um, 
The key also is tables. What are the tuning tables? What do they do? What do you log? What, how do you generate the histograms? Why would you generate a histogram? What data do you need from the histogram based on what tune are you trying to put together? You know, what errors are you trying to collect and correct and correct for? So there's a whole bunch of different means for doing that. And we'll go through each one of those with you and make you understand based on the specific setup what the right process and procedure is to get that part to them. And then obviously there's all miscellaneous things. There's fans, there's um, poor uh, the manual users out there and a lot of GM cars, they have CAGs, which is uh, you know the control where they do the one to four shift. We'll show you how to get rid of that and we'll show you how to get rid of torque management, but not make the car unsafe and not make it so it breaks itself. We'll show you the safe ways of doing that. Finally, there's a whole bunch of different things on the outside. Uh, transmission tuning, we kind of specialize in that as well, whether it be four or six speed. I know the eight speeds are out. We're just getting started uh, getting that together, but right now we're pretty proficient in all of the uh, the 4Ls and 6L uh, type um, GM tra transmissions out there, and we can help you go through what the basis is for that. And then finally, we can actually we can actually help you out when you're into your tuning sessions, whether you're at the dyno location or you're tuning on the street. If you can find a Wi-Fi hotspot someplace, then our system and our process will allow us to kind of be with you as you do that. Um, we certainly do. We do a lot. We have two, at least two customers right now that we're doing remote tuning for in the dyno shops, and it works out really well uh, for us. So, so that's kind of an overview. Um, certainly, there's a lot more detail that we can go through, but it's just enough to hopefully wet your whistles and get you interested and have you give us a call or, get, or give us an email and uh, let us help you and, and figure out what it is you need and let us. Uh, make your tuning process uh, more more regimented and, and much more productive. So thank you. Again, my name is Ed Moulton from ERM Performance Tuning, and I thank you so much for your time and effort.